Inquisitor Malfar of the Ordo Hereticus pondered the predicament he was in. He had recently been led to a hive world by the name of Tigar in the Ultramar Segmentum, with reports of a small cult following a possessed man which named itself the Gift Bringer. It begun quiet and small at first, a few minor crimes here and there, some stolen goods, food, and other less important accessories that wouldn't stop the gears of the Imperium, but then it escalated. Reports of tech adepts and priests being robbed of their robes, most being simply bludgeoned to compliance, others simply just torn apart by their attackers, and most worryingly, those with weapons attached to their mechadendrites were also taken. It had taken a surprising amount of force to dislodge the cult from their master, taking the lives of several dozen Arbites and a few members of the Inquisitor's own entourage, all of which were repaid with the blood of the cultists. Thankfully, the gift bringer was surprisingly unwilling to fight himself, saying that he would go if his followers of the gift bringer cult were allowed to live. The Inquisitor obliged, led the possessed man onto a craft to be tortured on his ship in high orbit before ordering the local Arbites to gun those cultists they had captured down and hunt those that fled. Malfar allowed his torturer to start the long process, an ex Arbites himself, saved from the hangman's noose by Malfar himself for his skill in confession collecting. He had just finished looking at the reports of the damage done by the cult and their actions before entering the room which contained the torturer and the possessed. That'll do for now, Arbites. I wish to speak to this possessed before you cut out his tongue. The Arbites turned his head and nodded, turning his attention to the tray of tools he used, wheeling them out of the room and shutting the door. Speak, Possessed. Tell me your name. Malfar knew that to even speak with the things of the warp was a dangerous game, one that even his previous mentor failed to remember. He tapped the sigil of the Inquisition on his chest and ran the prayer beads through his fingers as a form of protection, and in his mind, recited the holy scriptures bound on his armor with wax. When the thing spoke, it sounded like two voices trying to talk over each other, one like an old man, one that might make someone remember a kind elderly relative or neighbor, the other a harsh voice, like nails on slate, mean and unforgiving. We were once two, a saint and a devil, one that would give, the other would take, it began, its stolen and torn red robes of previous tech adepts jostling slightly as it moved to look at the Inquisitor. We were left treats and drink by children before they slipped, and we made them tuck themselves in tight for fear of us. It flexed its fingers, and the Inquisitor noticed very little mutation had occurred, which was strange for possession. Most demons would shape the body like clay. The only sign that the man had been warp-touched was a small curved horn protruding from one side of the thing's head and a long, white beard that had never been on the host's body before possession. You are nothing more than a trickster, a liar, and a deviant who would sway the followers of the god emperor for your own machinations. He ran the prayer beads through his fingers once more. Shall I tell you of your crimes against the Imperium? and its denizens of the world you claim to bring hope and joy via warp spawn? But I only brought what they asked of me, Inquisitor. I only brought joy and hope. You gave an overloaded plasma pistol to a small child, which fired and cleared the level of her haplock. She only wanted to show her parents a new magic trick. She wanted to show them the sun. The gift bringer replied a small smile of satisfaction growing upon its bruised and bloody face. The amount of tech adepts and priests your mob brought down and killed made a plasma reactor overheat, leading to the destruction of an administration building and half a factory complex. The rage of the Inquisitor was building up, fumbling around with the prayer beads slightly quicker than before. He was tempted to simply kill the man with the bolt pistol maglock to his side, but he resisted the urge in order to understand this strange warp spawn. I can't be the gift bringer without the right garments. I have always worn my red and white. And probably the worst of your good deeds was sending a shipment of food to one particular hablock. They wanted me to give them food. Who am I if not the gift bringer to oblige? It shrugged, 
Malfar rang his hands through the beads more thoroughly this time, his anger ever building. Half the food you sent them was off, causing most to die of poisoning as the Medicaid facilities were already full from you and your cult's other numerous crimes. Malfar sighed, mostly at the incompetence of those below to deal with simple injuries and afflictions in an effective time, but also as a way to simply regain some composure. He flexed his hands and fingers slightly before returning them to fists, clenching the prayer beads once more. But the other half were composed of numerous human corpses, either taken before they could reach the corpse starch plant or numerous missing people, and all of those who tasted it were put to the wall. At least they ate in the end. Is there not something you want, Inquisitor? You haven't had a gift in a long while. I can sense it. It smirked, looking at the Inquisitor. The last gift you ever got was your bolt pistol and the very armor you wear. I will not be tempted from the light of the God Emperor Demon. I have not been tempted before, and will not be by you or those that will come after you. Malfar spat in return, but he wasn't surprised. Countless demons before this one had asked to form pacts or join in some way to gain power. His answer was always the same. Come now, Inquisitor. I already know what my torturer wants, what your navigator wants, and what your crew wants. So tell me that I might tell you, so that you and I might fulfill them together. Malfar didn't respond with words this time, only an armored fist to the thing's gut and one to the jaw. He could feel ribs and teeth becoming loose beneath his fist. A fresh red river ran from the Giftbringer's mouth, and it smiled. All in good time, Inquisitor Malfar. I'm sure I will know what you want as a gift. Abiti! Malfar barked. Footsteps approaching from down the corridor reached the door, and it hissed open. Continue with your methods, but bind this demon's mouth. I don't want it to tempt you or anyone who might listen to it. The RBT stepped to the side, allowing the Inquisitor to exit the chamber. Keep it alive. I wish to study this one. I will return after my meeting with the Planetary Governor. The RBT nodded once more, entering the room with his tray of newly cleaned tools at the ready. Once the door hissed shut again, he looked to the hand that he held his prayer beads and noticed them missing. No matter, he thought. They were in that room for definite. He was sure the Arbiti torturer in his company might find use of them, or maybe even re-gift it to him, polished and brand new. He walked down the hallway to his private quarters, with what most might see as a spring in his step, compared to his normal gait. He wanted to offer the governor something special, as a success for capturing the possessed man. Perhaps he might give him one of the bottles of fine wine or amasek he had stored, he also thought of gifting his torturer Arbiti some more tools while back on the surface of the planet. After all, maybe that's what he wanted. He would have to ask the Giftbringer what he wanted, and what his astropath wanted, and what his crew wanted. He could gift anyone with anything, after all. He was an Inquisitor. Little was out of his reach or domain. He would give anything to those on the world below if they asked, even if it was death, food, or anything at all. He would gift it with glee and hope. Once he gifted everyone on this planet, he would go on to the next, and then the next, and then the next, until he reached holy terror at the foot of the golden throne, and he would ask the Emperor himself what he would want as a gift. <laughs>